Howdy. Now let's talk about angular momentum. So before we begin, I want you all to pause this video, jot this down, and then we'll talk about it. So let's go ahead and talk about it. So angular momentum, sometimes it's kind of hard to find on a formula sheet because it's variable is L. So L is your angular momentum. And there's two equations for it. You're either going to be using I omega or you're going to be using MVL. Now you're going to utilize I omega whenever you have an object that's rotating and you're going to use MVL when you have an object that's moving linearly that causes rotation. And the best example that I can think of is think of those dunk tanks, right? You go to a carnival in the, th uh, the dunk tank, and what will happen is you have a baseball that you throw that moves linearly, and then that rod that gets the tank that's going to be rotating. So what's going to happen is the baseball is going to have an angular momentum MVL, and then that bar that's rotating is going to have an I omega. Now, I is moment of inertia. We know omega. We know M. We know V. It's L that's that new dis uh, new introducing new variable. And that L is the distance from the axis of rotation. So going back to that baseball example, if let's just say the baseball hits my forearm right or the tank right here, L would be the distance from the axis of rotation to wherever it struck. Okay? This um, and so that would be your L. Okay. So if we take a look at number one, it says what is the final angular velocity of the thin uniform metal bar immediately after the collision. So similarly, this is going on here. And so I have that V naught, 10 meters per second. We're going to call M1, that'll be that baseball. And it strikes 1.5 meters from the axis of rotation. That is your little L. The length of the rod is 2. The mass of this rod is 10. Then it bounces back with the final velocity of 6 meters per second. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking for omega F. Now, in order to set this up, just like before, L0 is going to be equal to LF, just like back with linear momentum, P0 equals PF, L0 equals LF. And so initially, all the momentum is simply within that baseball. So you'll have some M1 V0 L, and at the end, it bounces back linearly. So it'll have a negative, right? Momentum is still a vector direction matters. It'll have a negative M1VF times L plus. Now this rod is rotating. It'll rotate with some, an moment, uh, with some momentum of I omega. Now they did not give me the moment of inertia for this rod, so that's why that previous video when we talked about moment of inertia was so important. That I of a thin slender rod through one end, if you go back to your formula sheet, that's one third ML squared, they gave us the mass of the rod, the length of the rod, and now I have its moment of inertia. And now that all my variables are given, you do basic algebra to solve for omega f, plug in all of your numbers, and that would be your final answer for number one. There's one more example that I want to do, because now let's do an example in which we're going to be forced to use parallel axis theorem to answer the problem. So take it, let's take a look at one more example. So taking a look at number two, what I have is that a merry-go-round with a radius of two meters has a moment of inertia of 250, and it is rotating at 10 revolutions per minute. But then a 25 kilogram child jumps onto the edge. What's the new angular velocity? But once again, L naught equals LF. And what's going on is a merry-go-round is rotating, a kid jumps on it, and now it's got a new angular velocity. And so what's going to happen is, is in order to have a new angular velocity, you need a new moment of inertia. And so what's going to happen is it had an original I naught and omega naught. And because the moment of inertia changed, and momentum is conserved, we have to have a new angular velocity. So they told me that my initial moment of inertia was 250. My omega naught, I decided to put in radians per second. And so my omega naught was pi over 3 radians per second whenever I converted. In this situation, you don't have to convert. You want to keep it in revolutions per minute? Be my guest. I just like the radians per second because it's a lot more uh, flexible. You can do a lot more things with it in case they ask follow-up questions after this. Um, now, the last thing I need is I need my final 
moment of inertia. And because that child is like an external object and attached himself or herself to the edge of that merry-go-round, that now affects the moment of inertia and so I have to use parallel axis theorem. And if you remember from the previous video, parallel axis theorem, your new moment of inertia was your old moment of inertia plus md squared, where that md squared is the md squared of that child. And so, the old moment of inertia was 250. The md squared, the mass of the child was 25. d, the distance from the axis of rotation. They said that the child jumped onto the edge, which means the distance from the axis of rotation would be that radius. Okay, and so, that's why that's at 2 meters squared, and that comes out to 350. And now that you have I naught, now that you have omega naught, now that you have IF, you can find your final angular velocity by just plugging all of those numbers into your calculator. And that is how angular momentum is going to work.